Interwest is a retail independent insurance agency offering a full range of business and personal insurance products. We're very proud of our alliance with public television and thankful for the opportunity to serve our local communities. Coming up on Tea Time, it's par for the course. Just before sunrise, and with the anticipation of the world's top golfers soon to arrive, see what it takes San Francisco's Olympic Club to prepare for the return of the U.S. Open Golf Tournament. Golf is a game of relationships. See the bond shared by Sandy Tatum and Tom Watson. The game grabbed me from the time I was a little boy. Hear how the game has helped shape their lives. And dress the part for some old fashioned fun. Meet the players who swing at the chance for a round of hickory golf. Some of country music's best, including Clay Walker and Jack Ingram, hit the links for some fun to raise money for others less fortunate. All this and more coming up on Tea Time, golf in Northern California. Hi, I'm Frank LaRosa in San Francisco at the spectacular Olympic Club, one of the world's most prestigious golf courses. You can feel the energy and the anticipation here because the U.S. Open, one of the most celebrated golf tournaments in the world, returns for a fifth time here at Olympic Club. We're going to find out what it takes to host a U.S. Open, and we'll talk to some of golf's luminaries about their experiences as well. It's a place abundant in natural beauty and steeped in golf history, consistently ranked as one of the top 100 golf courses in the U.S. Built and lovingly maintained since 1918, the Olympic Club's 45 holes have challenged some of the game's greatest competitors. And the unmatched lake course has seen some of the most dramatic finishes in U.S. Open history, including the first one at Olympic Club in 1955 when little-known Jack Fleck defeated golf legend Ben Hogan in a sudden death playoff. The U.S. Open dates back to 1895 in Newport, Rhode Island. 2012 marks the 112th competition for the U.S. Open Championship and the fifth time it's been held at the Olympic Club. Number four is a dog leg left. But John Abendroth, a former PGA Tour golfer who's been an Olympic Club member for more than four decades. He's not surprised the U.S. Open is coming back in 2012. A place like Olympic Club obviously is steeped in history. What is it about Olympic Club that, you know, that really makes it stand out? Well, I think the small greens are old and traditional, mm -hmm. but really, uh, you know, what comes to mind is maybe it's elegant in its simplicity. Yeah. You know, there's not a lot of contrived situations. Uh, it would be difficult to hit a golf ball out of bounds. Uh, we're not going to have any balls spin back into ponds. Uh, you're not going to have a, a, a fairway that's split by a river or a, or a creek. It's, it's elegant in its simplicity. Little wonder that elegant simplicity draws back some of golf's living legends. Native San Franciscan Ken Venturi won 14 <laughs> PGA tournaments over his 10-year career, including the dramatic U.S. Open back in 1964. When you, when you think about the fact that the, uh, the U.S. Open is coming back to Olympic Club for the fifth time, you can't think about Ken Venturi and not think about the U.S. Open 1964 and Congressional. Well, it was the last year they played 36 holes, and, and, and to think about it, when you think about it 47 years ago now, in those days with the equipment we had, it was the longest par 70 in the history of the Open. It played 7,050 yards. Wow, with the old equipment. It's an era I lived in. When you think of the people that I've known uh, close to Bobby Jones, Gene Saracen, New Walter Hagen, taught by Byron Nelson and Ben Hogan. Ben Hogan said it best, and I agreed with him at all the time, that there are four things he always wanted. He wanted narrow fairways, he wanted high rough, mm -hmm. he wanted smaller greens, and he wanted hard greens. And Ben Hogan would likely cheer some of the changes underway at the Olympic Club for the upcoming Open. At least eight holes are being lengthened, in part to better challenge a new generation of hard-driving professionals. A lot of great golf courses are becoming obsolete because how far these kids can hit it. I mean, I mean, we used to drive with 260, we were killing it, yeah. you know. but. It's, it's the game has changed with the equipment, the golf ball, and, and, and you look at conditions. You see so many times now today, 
where you see players putting from 10, 12, 15 yards off the green. Right. Well, the fairways are like the old greens used to be, sure. so we never used to have that because we had snarly fairways and everything like that. But it's but it's been great, and to see see these young players, it's just amazing to see the talent that's out there. Like past tournaments, as many as 50,000 spectators will flock to the Olympic Club to see that amazing young talent at the 2012 U.S. Open. Good for the club, good for the local economy, good for the game here in Northern California. It's obviously wonderful for the members um, to be able to show off our crown jewel of the Olympic Club, the lake course. But for the city of San Francisco and the entire Bay Area, it is, um, it, you know, it's really a shot in the arm. To me, the Northern California and the Bay Area has had, you know, a great tradition and history of golf. Sure. You know, with Ken Venturi and Bob Rosberg, George Archer, uh, Johnny Miller, and, and many, many others. And, and I think it just says, you know, this is a location that, that the USGA needs to be for the national championship. Yeah, sinking a putt is usually a simple thing to do, but it takes on much greater meaning when it's done by golfers with special needs. We're lucky to have a program here in Northern California that addresses those needs. It's called Special Olympics Golf. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. They've traveled from across California. And this is Jacob who brought the torch in. Good job, Jacob. I declare this game's officially open. Let's go have some fun. To take part in this special celebration. Are you gonna play golf today? Yeah. Yeah? Are you pretty good? I think good. Yeah? <laughs> Jacob is one of many golfers out here today who was participating in the Special Olympics Championship. It's a program for players of all ages with special needs and a program that touches many lives. How'd you do on that last hole? Uh, it's cool. We did great. What do you mean it was cool? We had a great tee shot. Great. Jeanette is Cindy's volunteer coach and has played golf with Cindy for more than three years. Cindy, you've got a pretty good friend here. He is. How does it make you feel to know Jeanette's out here with you all the time? He's, he's my friend. It's very rewarding and what a, what a great way to give back to the community and make some great friendships. California Eagles started back in 1983. Um, some of our parents, and these kids are still in the program, came to Dick McShane, who's a pro out here at Hagen Oaks, and asked him if they, he could teach their kids to golf. And we currently have 70 athletes in the program. The original ones that started are still in the program, which is really cool. They're up in their 30s now. And so it's been going on for 28 years. Special Olympics provides uh, opportunities for people with intellectual capabilities to be able to uh, see what capabilities they have in physical activities and sports. It was started by Eunice Kennedy Shriver back in her backyard in Maryland in 1963. We caught up with this mother-daughter team on the course. Susie, how long have you two been playing golf together? We've been playing golf together for probably about six years together, mm -hmm. for Special Olympics alternate shots. I think it builds their self-esteem. Um, it's good teamwork. Um, Michelle has met some great friends through Special Olympics that she's continuing to keep the friendships. An inspiring tournament that's designed to build confidence and self-esteem through golf. You fall in love with every one of them. I mean, they're, they're all my kids. And so you just have joy in every single thing that they experience and learn. It's so much fun. While you're still warm in your bed thinking about your tea time, the grounds crew has been up for hours getting the course ready for you to play and stand on that first tee. We're gonna meet the renowned superintendent here at Olympic Club, Pat Finland, and talk about what it takes to get a golf course ready for you to play. All right, good morning. This may look like almost any early morning planning meeting, but this one is different. It's not even 6 a.m. And these men are already stretching and getting their daily deployments across a vast and scenic battlefield. Green 
It's a task taking up 364 days a year. Their assignment? Tame, trim, and manicure the 45 holes of the Olympic Club, all before dawn and the arrival of the first golfers. Each day it's a small army of at least 25 highly trained groundskeepers, all under the watchful eye of Pat Finland, who was named Superintendent of the Year in 2012 by the Golf Course Superintendents Association of Northern California. Finland has been Director of Golf Maintenance Operations at the Olympic Club for a decade. As I look around and I see what, what you all do, you're part agronomist, you're part chemist, and you're, you know, part some other words with ist on the end. It, there's, a, there's a lot that goes into this. Well, it is. It's a blending of a lot of different disciplines from, we have guys that are out doing electrical work, putting in sprinklers, mm -hmm. uh, that's wiring. We have uh, uh, sand top dressing. We have guys that work on equipment, uh, pesticide applications, fertilizer applications, trying to predict the weather, which we're no better than anybody else, but uh, everything's based upon how the grass reacts to, to what's going on around it. Getting that grass to react perfectly is the essence of a great golf course. If Pat Finland's the general of this operation, then Justin Mandon's one of his lieutenants. He manages around 20 men working on the famous lake course. These workers cutting the greens must change their mowing patterns every day. And imagine this, you probably mow your lawn down to about a two inch height. These surfaces are 20 times closer at a tenth of an inch. You can't make any mistakes because you're going to see it when you're mowing at a tenth of an inch. If you go just a little bit beyond that green surface, uh, you're going to have scalping and directional mowing that we do every day, knowing which direction to mow. Um, there's a lot more than just walking behind a mower in the morning. Even though all this precision and attention to detail is par for the course at the Olympic Club, there are extra efforts underway as the clock ticks down to the U.S. Open. A lot of it involves mowing lines and making the ferries a little bit uh, more narrow and a little bit more difficult. How does it make you feel to know you're the man, <laughs> the guy that's going to get this course ready for the U.S. Open? It feels great. Um, but I'm just one person, you know, we have a great team here. It takes everybody on this crew to make this happen. Pretty much all these groundskeeping efforts are a fascinating blend of skill, hard work, and even science. Check out this clever device that moves the cup and replaces the old hole almost without a trace. I'm just gonna test out to see if this is a good spot. And Justin showed me a stimp meter, a tool developed way back in 1935 that measures the exact speed of a green. Balls roll down an aluminum pole, and the distance is measured from a half dozen different angles. On a perfect green, balls roll almost exactly the same number of feet each time. They're exactly 11 feet. And how does that relate on the stint meters? That, that's they're running at 11. That's I'll be done. And that's what you said they were. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Like so many Northern California courses, in recent years, the Olympic Club's made a number of eco-friendly improvements in its course maintenance. More recycled water, fewer pesticides, and fertilizer. We all got into this business because we love nature and being out here with nature. And the last thing we want to do is destroy nature. I still think every golfer goes to the golf course for one thing, and that's to play great conditions. It, regardless of what course they're at, they want the course to be in good condition, and, and that's our job to provide that. I'm Sandy Tatum, and I'm lucky enough to be a friend of Tom Watson. <laughs> And I'm Tom Watson. I say the same thing about my friend Sandy Tatum. <laughs> How long have you two been brothers? <laughs> Only about 30 or 40 years. Yeah, about 1968 is when I think uh, when we yeah. first uh, met each other. Uh, you kicked our butts in the, uh, the Stanford oh, alumni match. Oh, I love that memory. <laughs> the game grabbed me from the time I was a little boy. Uh, and I, I just loved getting out there and having a go at it. And it all started when my father took me out to the golf course where there were really, really people playing, gave me a, a victory shafted club and some golf balls and said, stay out of people's way and when you get tired, go sit in the car. And I would have been in the car six or seven times by the time he finally came out and took me home and I loved it. My father did the same thing. He, he started me with a hickory shafted uh, uh, free wood and a five iron. 
and he, he taught me how to grip the club. He taught me how to stand up to it. He held my head like this. He said, all right, swing, keep your head still. And uh, it, I didn't have any trouble with balance and I hit the ball, uh, I guess, pretty much in my first few swings and uh, I started from there. The right. swings have been the same ever since. <laughs> People have, play golf for a variety of different reasons, uh, but the number one reason, honestly, is that you know they have a chance to go out and, and walk around a park. I mean, this is this is a park. Uh, you know, that this is quiet for the most part, and you uh, you have a beautiful experience walking around a golf course. The love affair I had with the game was very very easy to spread it and to go out and see if I could do anything, anything I could, to make the game available to people and to have people have the kind of experiences I've had that made my life so very, very, very satisfying. I'd like to be remembered as a lover of the game. I hope that they say that uh, he, he, added, uh, he added to the game uh, with uh, not only his play, but uh, his, uh, uh, his ability to, to, to help other people play the game better and enjoy the game. Almost any day in Northern California, you'll find a charity golf tournament we found one that's unique. It combines amateur golfers with country music artists. It's a charity tournament that combines picking and playing golf. Any of you folks here at the, at the Golf and Guitars for the very first time? Golf and Guitars is an annual event that combines golf and country music at Hagen Oaks Golf Complex in Sacramento. It's a shared effort between Morton Golf Foundation and KNCI Country Music 105 to help disadvantaged children, especially those who are battling cancer. Personally, I have a great country music fan. Our family is big music fans as well. Um, we really just wanted to have uh, some kind of function that involved golf, involved our passion, but more importantly, really gave back to the community. So in four years, we'll have raised about $150,000 for charity here in Sacramento. The tournament starts with a round of golf in the morning and ends with a dinner and a foot-stopping, hand-clapping concert. Today, Carrie Kendall is playing in the tournament in memory of her father. She's teamed up with famous country musician, Clay Walker. I'm gonna work on you today. I hope so, I'll beat it. You are playing with Clay Walker, how's that? Oh, it's fantastic, can't beat it. Yeah? Yeah. How is he to play with? You know, we just started playing with him and uh, he's been uh, very helpful, instructions, and uh, trying to help me out here since I'm new, beginner. This is amazing, you know, come out even though it's raining and windy. I love it. It's a charity that has a lot of integrity, and um, I've donated to it a lot, enjoy that, and uh, it's one of my favorites. Robin Raphael's little boy, Keaton, died of cancer. Shortly after his death, she started the Keaton Raphael Memorial, which is one of this year's beneficiaries at Golf and Guitars. We know that through all of our journey, um, there's so many other parents out there who have children with cancer, and if we can just be a small help in their journey um, while they're going through it and after, when they survive or should they lose a child, um, we want to be there for them and help them with resources. Morton Golf Foundation is a 5013C that actually donates uh, golf programs to kids that couldn't normally afford it. All those great traditions we have in golf of sportsmanship and honesty and all those kind of things, we're passing that on to underprivileged kids. And then the Keaton Raphael Memorial Foundation is this year's charity of choice for KNCI. They're fighting kids neuroblastoma cancer and there's not a better charity than that. You're involved in a lot of charity events I know throughout the year. How does it make you feel to be involved in this one? Um, there's one that's really close to my heart. That's the Keaton Raphael Foundation. Um, I coached a young man who actually had cancer, neuroblastoma, wasn't supposed to make it, and every year he gets his head shaved in honor of that. My son joined him this year, so uh, for me personally, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing to be involved with. A beautiful thing indeed as the tournament comes to an end and the second half of the event gets underway. Just trying to have a good time. Featuring some of country music's best. Celebrities come out on your own time and do this. I mean, nobody's getting paid to do this. You're out here just su supporting us. That's the thing. Um, I get to live out my dream for a living. I love that you guys are giving back to the community, that we're giving back to the community, that I'm a part of something like that. Uh, it's a great time. I love playing golf. I love the people that come and uh, 
all the sponsors that, that are involved in it, all the, all the players. It was a great day, a lot of rain. I've never played in weather like this, so I was not going in. I was not quitting. It's like we, we made it around to the 18th hole, and did, we did great. So you came all the way from Nashville just to uh, sing a couple of songs tonight, support some charities, and have a good time. Yes, and I've had the best time and I um, hope to come back again and next year I'll be a better golfer. They've just been incredible in the community and the staff at Hagen Oaks. We're just grateful that they said, hey, we, we like what you do for kids with cancer in the community and they've always been very supportive. It's the distinct sound of Scottish music that sets the tone for today's round of golf on this Scottish style course. Dressed the part, these golfers step back in time to play some old fashioned golf with these wooden shafted clubs that date back to the early 1900s. Ian Larson came up with the idea to bring this style of golf back to the course. He's in charge of putting together two to three Hickory Golf Tournaments every year, with all the proceeds going to charity. But today's round is simply about having a good time. Hickory Golf is pretty amazing, and in a spot like this, the 16th hole, the ocean course at Half Moon Bay Golf Links, it doesn't get much better than this. Absolutely not. This is perfect and, and made for Hickory Golf. Ian, you look like you do this all the time. We do it pretty often. We started uh, playing these clubs and uh, it's hard to put them down. Really like playing with them. What do you feel, find the difference to be? Um, just a real thin blade and you've really got to hit it in the center of the club. Yeah, I figured that out too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the golf balls are replica. This is a 1905 ball and we play a 1920 five ball also. So this is a replica of the ball? Yeah. What's the difference in the balls? Uh, these are really soft um, mm -hmm. and I think it, uh, it helps the shaft so they don't get damaged. If you use any of the single one piece it'll really, it can crack the shaft over time. But they're, I think they're about a 60 compression all the way through and uh, they've got a great feel. Yeah, they, you know, and feel is really, uh, really interesting because when you, when you hit the ball and you hit it in the center of the club face, you really do feel it. We're reminiscent on old times, uh, original way that golf was played. We play with the old rules, and uh, in our tournament, you have to have a hickory shaft club, and, um, and, and that's about it. We, we try to go towards the origins. People are out there, they're playing today's modern clubs. You put one of these in their hand, what are you going to tell them? Um, don't expect much and have a great time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> have a nice walk. Dick Dutrasak is from New Hampshire and traveled oh, yeah. more than 3,000 miles to play a round of old time golf on a modern day course. So some guys are into muscle cars, some guys are into bowling, and you guys are into hickory golf. Yeah, we're, we're not fanatics about it, but we really enjoy getting out as a group and doing it oh, once it's, or twice it's, a year. It's an incredible amount of fun. Absolutely. I mean, you know, and the outfits really kind of get, get you into the spirit of the thing. I, I never go shopping for, for, for clothing. I go shopping for this once a year. <laughs> it, it's, it, it, it really makes the whole thing a whole lot of oh, fun. Oh, it's it really fabulous. Does. I understand that uh, these fabulous outfits you guys wear, you pay as much as eight or nine dollars for them, huh? Yeah, we have, uh, our, our big competition is uh, Best Dressed, and uh, we, we typically buy our stuff at a secondhand store right. and, uh, and go get uh, tailors to fit them for us. So, uh, yeah, the, the, big, the big challenge is to see who can come best dressed. One of you guys was bragging today, he spent 16 bucks for his outfit, but 12 of it was in the hat. Yeah, and that's a, that's a lot of expenditure for him. I think uh, last year his outfit was $1.65. <laughs> <laughs> It's majestic views like this, bordered by waves from the Pacific Ocean, that attract people to play a round of golf, whether it's with hickory or regular shafted clubs, on either the old course or the ocean course, where we're playing today. The Ritz-Carlton Half Moon Bay is set right among the two golf courses here at Half Moon Bay Golf Link. So they literally wrap around the hotel itself. And then um, just behind you, there are 30-foot cliffs that drop off into the ocean and the beach. Which is really cool. Oh, yeah. You can go out and play uh, two completely different golf experiences. Uh, the old course, much more kind of traditional American, you know, feel to it. You have to shape your ball in accordance to, you know, kind of how the shape of the hole uh, goes. Um, out here on the ocean course now, 
you know, you still have to shape your ball a little bit, but it's directed more by the wind. Standing up on that tee box and looking down and, and seeing the hotel and the coastline and, and the pelicans flying by, it's fantastic. You can't really go wrong with 18 on the old golf course, which is one of the most spectacular uh, views you're going to see in golf. Golf is an ongoing celebration of our region. It's little wonder that thousands of people come from throughout the world seeking their own tea time here in Northern California. I'm Frank LaRosa. Thanks very much for joining us. I'll see you next time on The First Tee. I love golf. To order a DVD copy of this program, call 888-814-3923 or visit kvie.org slash viewfinder. InterWest is a retail independent insurance agency offering a full range of business and personal insurance products. We're very proud of our alliance with public television and thankful for the opportunity to serve our local communities.